Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. God says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. We must be aware that during this time in history, history on this planet, grandparents, grandparents, seasoned, Grandparents, grandparents, that is connected to God, are so important. And it's important for them to be grandparents. It's important for them to understand that they came before their grandchildren for a reason. That they weren't born at the same time of their grandchildren. But they need to understand that I came first so I can be a foundation in you. Look at what the enemy has done. It has been a compression. There was a time, there was a time that when you looked at the grandparents and then you looked at the mothers and fathers and then you looked at the children, you had generations. And there was time in between each generation A generation is classified as 40 or 20 years. There was time in between. That means there was time for them to grow, for them to experience certain things in between. But now we had the grandparents and then we had the parents and then we had the children. But now the grandparents are the same age that the parents are now. Hear what I'm telling you. So we have, in essence, what what Satan has done is robbed us of a generation with our eyes open, and we didn't even recognize it. All the experience that came with time and, and walking with God and understanding something and maturity, now grandparents are the age of the parents. It is important to understand that a grandparent holds a very unique place In the plan of God. Very unique place. We sometimes as parents. Sister Bolden. We sometimes forget. When we're talking to our children. And we begin to tell them. You know I I, I, I wasn't anything like this. When I was your age. And I never did this. And I never did that. And my mama never had to tell me to do this. And my daddy not tell me to do this. And I always clean up my room. And I always do that. And and it takes the grandparent to say, wait a minute. uh, uh, I was there. And what I'm seeing in the grandchildren is the same thing I saw in you. Come on, see it. It is the grandparents that hook up the two generations and bring about peace. It is a very unique position, not by accident, but what God did. So Timothy, his, his, his grandmother, thank God for, was there to help and to build a foundation. Now, we ask God to make us a foundation. We ask him to make us a pillar. In Galatians chapter 2, verse number 9, follow me now, follow me now. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 9, in the original King James Version. In the original King James Version on the screen. Lord, make me a pillar. What are you saying? Lord, fix me so. Stabilize me so that my kids can build their lives on my life. Come on, I won't be long, but I'll be strong. Because he's trying to say something to us. What will the righteous do if the foundations be destroyed? He didn't just, he didn't say that. He, what, what he was saying, what he was saying was, it is happening. What are we going to do? Now the next verse says, God is in his holy, God is in control. But God needs us to bring about a change. Galatians chapter 2 verse 9. And when James Cephas, which was Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars. You see that now. 
And some of y'all are getting ready to be grandparents, don't know what you think, so you need to really listen. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seem to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathens, and they unto the circumcision. Just that one verse. Pillars. What is pillar? What do you do with a pillar? Pillar is part of the foundation. You build on a pillar. Judges chapter 16, verses 29 and 30, in the New King James Version. I want you to see a pillar. What is the significance of a pillar? When he says, these men are pillars. You got a whole lot of people in church, but I hear God saying and crying out, I need pillars in this generation. I need pillars in the next generation. That's what he's saying, Jameson. I need pillars in your generation. I need in every generation, I need somebody. Life that is so stable, I can build other lives on it. Watch this. In Judges 16, 29, it says this. And Samson, watch the text, took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple. And he braced himself against them, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Samson said, let me die with the Philistine. And he pushed with all his might and the temple fell on the lords and all the people who were in it. So the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. Now watch this. I'm going to use this. I use this to let you know that if the pillars crumble. See, people's lives are being supported with our lives. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, Text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. People lives, especially our children, and then when the parents are removed, the grandparents go in, they support. And really, the parents' lives are built upon the grandparents' lives. And if you rob them of one generation, if you remove the pillars, thousands of people died because the pillars. <sighs> Throw your hands up and say, Lord, make me a pillar. Come on. Now, he can only do that if we're willing, if we're willing to be stabilized. Samson pushed against the pillars and all these lives that was braced, that was up. The foundation collapsed. Oh, that's good, Father. Because the foundation is on the pillars. There are many can be part of, uh, let me show you in scripture, let me show you in scripture. First Peter chapter 2. And that's what I've been talking about for months. We started with God saying, you are a king and you are a priest as we were studying the kings of Israel. And we studied them for months. And this is what he's trying to get us to see right here in 1 Peter chapter 2 and starting at verse number 1. Watch this and watch the connection that he makes with this according to what we've been studying for months. He says, therefore, land aside all malice. Now, now he, he's going somewhere. He didn't say we didn't have it in us. He said we need to get it out of us. It is deceitful to think there's none in you. In this flesh dwell no good thing. It's a constant crucifying of the flesh. He said lay aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word. 
That you may grow thereby. You, you, you hear that foundational class? You hear that? We've been talking about spiritual, spiritual maturity. That's what we are. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, come in to him as to a living stone. Rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also. This is everybody that is born again. He says, you also. Jesus is a chief cornerstone. But what he's saying to us, you are a chip of the old block. You are a chip of the eternal block. And he says, you also. Look at somebody and say, I'm a stone. No, no, no. That's whether you want to be that or not. That's whether you want to be, once you're born again, you're a stone. But God now is looking for pillars. Because pillars hold up stones. Grandparents. Parents. Then the children. Then, then, then the parents become grandparents. And the children become it, it, the foundation. But if you destroy one level. He says, you also, look at somebody and say, you also. As living stones. Isn't that good? That means I'm supposed to be solid. Chip off the old block. That means I can crowd in, 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 in the hymn that says, rock of ages. Do y'all know what that means? Do, you know, we sing stuff, we don't really mean, know what it means. Rock of ages unmovable God is the rock of ages he's immutable he does not change impossible for him to change he's always solid he's rock solid you can depend on him you can trust in in him great is his faithfulness every day he's faithful and that's why we worry sometimes because we ain't leaning on him. Just kind of just kind of lean over a little bit. So I gotta learn how to lean and cast my cares on him because he careth for me. Rock of ages. What? Clap for me. Oh, we gotta get the hymns back in the church. We gotta get the hymns back in the church. We gotta get the hymns back because they say something to us and they last eternally. They don't they they just don't go with one song and then a new song. The hymns are stable. Clap, you know what that means, clap. That means open up. Now, a rock is the rock of ages, which is Jesus. He's impenetrable, he's immutable. But you know what? He'll open up. Let me hide. Because if I hide in you, can't no storm, no wind, no hurricane, no tornado in life. For mobile giving, Text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart.